All right guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're gonna finish the initial build of the Wild One blockhead. We're on to step 38, fitting the driver and crossbar for the cage. We're gonna need two M3x10s, two 3x12 self-tappers, and three small body clips. Now, this is where we discover that I fitted one of the body clip posts in the wrong place. The interior should just squeeze in through the cage and line up over the posts. You'll need to carefully route the wires so they're not in the way, but other than that, perfectly simple. The problem here is I fitted the rear post near the front of the chassis. I flicked back through the manual to double check, and there they were. Probably a case of late night building and not really paying enough attention to what I was actually doing. It's no bother though, we just need to unscrew them from the chassis, then refit them in the right place. Access isn't quite so easy, so we need to use a long shaft nut driver. Otherwise, we just need to nip them up and align the holes front to back, and we're back on track. Now the interior fits properly, we can clip in the three body clips. Two towards the back and one in the middle at the front. Next we need the A1 crossbar for the cage, which goes between the top frontmost holes, and gets fitted with the two self-tappers. We'll leave the screws just a little bit loose just for now. At the bottom front of the cage we use the M3 screws to attach the legs to the chassis. We'll do these ones up so they're not quite tight. We do need to take extra care with these ones as the plastic is fairly soft and will be easy to strip if we over tighten the screws. Now the cage is fairly stable, we can tighten up the two top screws. The two holes in the bar need to be vertical for the roof panel, so we can use the small allen key to stop the bar from rotating, aiming to keep it at just the right angle. And then lastly, we nip up the two lower screws. Step 39, the window nets and number boards. We need the two nets, the two number boards, template sheet, an M3 by 10 with a low profile head, a seven by three millimeter spacer, and a body mount plate. To trim the nets, we need to use the template on the printed sheet. Now it'd probably be easier just to cut the template out, but it's doable by just holding the net up to the paper. We need to try and set it up so we get good solid edges for attaching to the cage. But other than that, it's just a case of cutting the net with some scissors. Do both and they'll be ready to install. Next we have the number boards. Now they're clear polycarbonate, but don't worry, we don't need to paint them. We just need to carefully drill some holes and add clearance for the motor. It's not too difficult though. With the templates, it's actually quite straightforward. Being a Tamiya, the templates are perfectly sized, so all we do is put a board over the outline and use a punch to mark the centre of the holes. Now it would have been nice if the circles on the template had centre dots, but that's a minor thing really. Also, don't use pliers as a hammer. The second board only has the one hole, but it has a large cutout to clear the motor. The board has a protective peel-off layer, so we can use a marker to transfer the arc to the plastic. It won't be perfect, so we'll initially cut just inside of the mark, then adjust to make it fit. The holes need drilling with a 3mm bit, or you can use a 3.1 or 3.2mm to give yourself a little more wiggle room if things don't perfectly line up. That just leaves the mounting plate, which gets fitted with a low profile screw, through the top hole in the board with the two holes, and then we add the spacer and we thread on the mount. We're going to have to take it off again when we stick on the decal, but we need to make sure it's actually going to fit first. Okay, step 40, fitting the nets. Now the nets just offer up to the sides of the cage and we use some zip ties to attach them. Trouble is, we've still got to take the driver out to paint him and it's going to be far easier without the nets fitted so we're going to skip them for now and we'll fit them after the driver's ready. We might do something other than the zip ties too as they are a bit chunky. We'll have to see how it all fits before we decide what to do though. Step 41, fitting the number boards and flagpole. We need two M3x15s with low profile heads, two M3 flange nuts, the antenna mount, the antenna, which is really just being used as a flagpole, the left and right number boards, and the chassis. First, we'll attach the board that mounts to the motor side. We just need to use one of the screws and the nuts to attach it. Do the screw up so it's snug and check the fit and clearance. 
we need to make sure there's a nice even gap between the motor and the board with the board nice and level. Also, we need to route the wires so they're not going to wear through on the board. It's similar on the other side. We need to use another screw and nut to attach the board, but this time we've also got the metal mount that sits up against the cage. You can see on this one, I didn't quite get the holes in the right spots, so the board is just slightly off straight. I ended up using a small round file to elongate the top hole just a little bit so it becomes a slot. That way we can straighten the board, then nip up the screws when it's nice and level. After a little bit of fiddling then, we have the motor side trimmed up with the wires out of the way, and we have the left side board sitting level. Now we just need to take it all apart again, remove the protective film, stick on the decals and put them back together. Alright, we've got the boards on, which does look rather snazzy. Probably not great if you're actually going to bash the buggy though, as they're going to snap off, or at the very least they're going to bend after the first crash. We do have one more thing to do though. On the left board we need to loosen the lower screw, and we need to remove the metal upper mount so we can add some servo tape. We just need a little square inside the curve of the mount. Now, this does seem a little bit like a bodge to me, it would have been nice if there was some sort of tight fitting clip, but I guess they redid the parts bin and came up with the servo tape to stick it down. To refit, we just need to take up the slack on the two screws, then position the mount and stick it to the cage, then nip up the screws properly. Not my favourite, but I'm sure it's going to work well enough. For the flagpole, we need to thread in the antenna mount to the spring at the bottom of the pole. Stick one of the flags at the top from the decal sheet, Offer the mount up to the exposed screw threads by the gearbox and tighten it up. You can use a pair of needle nose pliers to grab the wire to give it a little extra tweak to get the flag pointing in just the right direction. Step 42, wheels and tyres. Now we don't need much for this one. There's the wheels and there's the tyres. There's no fancy bead locks, no rock solid tyres, no tiny screws. We just need to stretch the tyres over the wheels. The only thing to watch out for is you need to make a left and a right handed rear set. The front ones are symmetrical. If you're going to run the buggy fairly hard, you are going to want to glue the tyres with some tyre glue or thin cyanoacrylate. I'm hoping that for just cruising around, we'll get away without any glue. Of course, we can always glue them later if we really need to. Step 43, fitting the wheels. We need four M4 wheel nuts, six 1150 bearings, two drive pins, and the two black wheel adapters. For the rear wheels, we slide in a bearing and press it into the arm. Pop a shaft in through the hole in the axle. Offer up the wheel adapter so the side with the slot sits over the pin. Next is the wheel, then a nut. We're using bearings rather than the kit bushings, of course, so we don't need to use any grease. At the front, we need to pop a bearing into each side of a front wheel, then slide it over the spindle and thread on another nut. Do both sides and that's step 43 complete. Step 44, fitting the body. We need two M3x12s, three 3x8 self-tappers, two M3 flange nuts, four 3mm washers and a small body clip. And of course there's the roof and when we get to it the main body. First, we'll loosely fit the two rear screws on the roof. They fit into slots, so it's easier to get the nuts started now. We use the M3x12s with washers under the heads, then from the bottom we thread on the nuts just a couple of turns. Now when we offer the roof up, we notice that there's two little pimples on the cage that we were supposed to remove right near the beginning of the build. Not to worry though, we can just use some flush cutters to cut them flat. Now we really can offer up the roof and slot in the screw threads into the slots in the cage. There's some minor bending required, but nothing that's going to cause any damage. At the front we use the self-tappers with two more of the washers in the plastic crossbar. Once all four screws are loosely in, we can go round and nip them up. The front two don't need to be super tight, just snug. The rear two though do need to be tight enough that the grips on the nut bite into the plastic. Still not super tight, but a little more than just snug. The main body slides in from over the cage between the front lights. The rear mounts aren't tight just yet, so it probably won't sit quite right, but we can clip in the front clip to position the body. Now at the rear, we loosen the rear mounts, stick a finger in to hold the mount against the cage so it's in position, and then re-tighten the screws. 
All being well, the body should be in just the right spot and fairly well attached. Which just leaves one more step. Step 45, the battery cover. We need two M3x10s with low profile heads, two M3 flange nuts, a battery stopper, apparently, a small body clip and the cover itself. For the assembly, all we need to do is attach the metal bracket, the battery stopper, to the end of the cover. It's pretty obvious how it goes, just make sure that you have the cover the right way up. Make sure the screws are nice and tight and we can slot the assembly into the bottom of the buggy. Now it can be a bit of a tight fit for the first couple of fittings, but it will free up fairly quickly. Last, we just need to clip in the body clip to stop the cover from falling off. And well, that's about it. That's the Wild One blockhead built. There's still a few more things to do though. First, there's the driver, the side nets to sort out as mentioned earlier. But the big one though will be the battery. The buggy's designed for a typical 6L Naimai or similar, which is all well and good, but it does put the battery wires outside of the buggy and they come in through a hole that we'd need to make next to the driver, which needless to say looks pretty awful. So the plan is to make up some sort of packing so we can run a smaller LiPo pack and keep all the wiring internal. It's going to look miles better and probably go a little bit better too. Now I'm not sure when we're going to get to that though as I'm a bit short on time and there's lots of custom detail work to do. We've got the sand scorcher to paint and finish, also there's the wrecker, there's a Ford Aeromax to have a look at and I think a couple of others too. But hopefully from January, I'll be able to get stuck into all the details. Right, that's it for now then. So as always, thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys.